casa. Good morning and welcome to Work at Horses with Jim. We are back down here today and this is our, our last video we'll be showing on this log job. Um, we have just a few more trees of the marked trees and then this job will be done. I am going to come back here in the next fall, next winter, um, but for now it's all done. So I'm kind of very excited but yet very disappointed um, that the job is done. I'm disappointed because I've really enjoyed the job. I, I really had a, a good winter down here. We've had a lot of snow, but we haven't had that terribly cold temperature, so it's been really enjoyable working. I've enjoyed using the sled on the nice snow track, snow trails that we have. Um, it's been a good winter. Um, I'm excited because I'll be going home and I'll be doing more stuff with, with my colts, and spring is coming, and we'll be starting spring work and all that good stuff on the farm. So I hope you continue to follow us as we go throughout our even our farming life as we go into spring and summer. So today I want to talk about a few things, mostly um, with the two horses that I'm using. But to start with, let's get this these logs loaded up and we'll continue on from there. So as I start loading up, here's something I'm a little bit embarrassed to show you. My horses inched ahead and grabbed some trees, chewing on some trees, and I believe it's the first time they've ever actually done that since I put these two together. But I guess they're a little bit hungry. But anyways, this particular log I'm swinging out of the way is was such that I had to um, get a better grip on it in the very center of the log to be able to lift it up. A lot of people have asked, well, why don't you get a grapple and put on your excavator, which would would be nice, but uh, so often when I'm in the woods logging, I come across stumps and whatnot that I need to dig out with the bucket. So I think I'll stick with the bucket because it's kind of more of a dual purpose thing, but it does have to be centered in the log to be able to lift it up. But most of the time I can do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we're loaded up with that first load of the morning. And I want to show you even a few things on my trail as we head out with this first load. It's a nice little load, or a nice, decent sized load, actually. Um, we still have a 16 foot log over there. And then right below you, Brenda, there's a, I think there's a, like a 20 foot log, two 10 footers that I might just keep as one piece and take it out and cut it landing. And then I have one little tiny little tree over there that I need to cut. Um, but let's get this out of here and we'll go from there. Okay, tough stuff. So I want to explain a few things. Whoa, that fell off. Oh my goodness, gotta fix that. This is one downfall of the scoot as opposed to my double sleds. The double sleds turn really nice. When my scoot is empty, it has a lot of flex and it will turn really well. But when it's loaded like this, it just can't flex quite so well. Yeah. So what happened as I'm turning these sharp corners, it's put a lot of, a lot of strain on the angle, I mean on the end of the tongue there where the irons are and actually spread them so that the pin actually came right out and that's what happened here. So we just pounded it back together so it's a closer fit. Put it all back together and we're good to go. Okay, I just want to explain a few things. So I stopped right here because I have a fairly good hill to climb right now on this trail. And I have, I started explaining this earlier in, in some of my videos about how this log job was taken care of and done. And um, I was hoping to get the forester even to come out and explain a bunch of things. And he would like to, but he just has been so busy. He has not had time to get out here. Um, so maybe in, later on next this summer or this fall he could do that but anyways this job here was uh, actually cut off in 09 by a mechanical operator and what they did was made paths down through there and just kind of cut through the paths um that's a story he'll have to john would have to explain to you although he wasn't here at the time but anyways um so because of these paths that's what i've been using and it's been working great um, there's been times where instead of taking every single path, I've actually made a path through. So what I have here is I went through with my excavator and I, as long as my excavator fits, it has a six foot blade, my sled and horses can go right through here. And as you can see, this is kind of rougher terrain here. And these two trees here, for example, I just barely fit through an es excavator. Actually, I had to lift my blade about a foot off the ground to, to clear it. But even so, I have come out of here with quite a few loads now, and I haven't even scarred up the trees from the horses in the sled, which is really good. But it's, it is a little bit of a rough road here. I have a stump right here that I chose not to dig out, which I sometimes I do dig out. And so we're kind of hitting dirt right there. Um, 
But yeah, that's what we're dealing with at times. And this just allowed me to have my trail. See what happens when you come in here and you've got the main trail, it's all iced, kind of icy and, and, and really packed good. And then you start a, a new one of these trails, you go right back down to the very end of them. And then that those first few loads out of there, first even day or two out of there, it's kind of hard going because it's mealy heavy snow and it's not a packed trail. A packed trail makes a huge difference on how easy you can pull a load out. So what happens is I go back down there and I can only take a, I have to take a smaller load all around the landing because I can't, it just pulls harder. So I have to have it start with a small load until I get the trail broke good. It doesn't look like a small load. No, but I've already hauled a bunch of, I've already got a, established a trail here so right. it pulls easy okay yeah yeah it's pretty packed in here So as we're headed out through with Bill and Ken, I wanted to talk about how well they're doing, how well they've done since Buck has died and I put these two together. Now, I had some concerns, large concerns when I first started as to whether or not they'd work good together because Ken is so slow and Bill is so fast, generally. Now this is, they've had a day off now, so Bill is actually faster than he has been, but he's actually slowed down and Bill and Ken has actually sped up a little bit. But it just didn't happen. I kind of had to make it happen. So I'll try to explain what I do to make that happen. Of course, there's always a line adjustment set that, that helps some, but it doesn't always solve the problem. When you have a horse that is just naturally a slow walker, just like a person, it's hard to get them to go faster. And when you have a horse that walks fast, it's hard to get them to go slower. So I want to just explain what I do. So I have a stick here. It's about a four foot stick, a very small little stick. So what I do is I'll hold that stick in my hand along with the right line. And um, I would just touch Ken on his tail head. Sometimes there, sometimes I touch him on his, on his butt, but a lot of times the tail head is a really good spot to touch a horse. And um, all it does is it, it tells him to get going. And when I set this right, it's such that if my stick doesn't hit him, I don't have to bother hitting him. But if he backs up enough or goes slow enough that I actually hit him, that's, that's when he needs to be hit. Oh. Now when I say hit, I don't even really hit him. I just tickle his tail as I say it. Um, so we stopped here because this is our regular stopping spot. We have, we have two regular stopping spots. And so um, that's what I'm doing to encourage him to go a little bit faster. Now I know because of his age and because I know him so well, that I can get him to walk the same speed as Bill. But the only way I can get him to continue doing that is I have to continually uh, tapping his tail and getting him to go faster. Um, he'll go for little stretches where he'll walk fast and then he starts slowing down again. Cut stop. Cut. Um, now with Bill, it's still the continuing, continual um, holding him back. Now, the best thing for him is hard, hard work. One other thing I'll show you is, as you've um, even seen in our, uh, when we weighed these guys up, you know, their weights, Ken is quite a bit bigger than Bill. So you would think, Ken can hold more weight. Well, he sorta can, probably, but he's too lazy. And he's just not a really aggressive horse, whereas Bill is not lazy. He is an aggressive horse. So what I've done is I've actually, if you point down here where my stick is, Brenda, 
I have actually adjusted the eveners. So you see these holes in these eveners. I haven't talked too much about this. But there's holes on each side of this, these, this evener. So what happens is um, right now I have this set so Ken's whipple tree right here is set on the very outside hole and Bill's whipple tree is set on the very inside hole. Now this evener is such that when it's laying this way it is a can, I mean Bill, is actually got an inch and a half the, what we call the hard end. In other words, you know, with the leverage of the double tree or the evener, it's actually a harder pull for him than it is for Ken. Um, this particular evener, if you flip it over, it changes it a little bit, but um, it's still um, adjustable. And I have the ability to adjust that to the needs of my team that I have that I'm working. Um, and I'm watching this, these two whipple trees to make sure they're even. If Ken's whipple tree is slacking, that's when I know I need to tap them a little bit. I'm continually pulling back on Bill, so I don't need to do anything to him um, except for work on And when he's worked a lot, he will actually settle down and walk really considerably slower, but still faster than Bill's slowest walk is faster than Bill's, than Ken's fastest walk of his normal gait. So I have to change that gait, and the stick is the way I do it. Um, it's, just, it's just one of those things to, to try to get horses to work better together as a team. I am continually trying new things as I'm working the horses. And I'll show you one other thing that I did do. Um, now, I've talked about brain straps before, and I started out with these two with a brain strap in Bill and not a brain strap in Ken. Oh, hoping and thinking that eventually I could take the brain strap off of Bill and just have them on just a regular bit. And that actually has come to that point. He doesn't have a brain strap on anymore, so he is working with just the regular bit in his mouth. But I actually changed, um, we could, sh I'll show it to you when we get to landing. Um, I put a rubber bit in Ken's mouth and I'll show you that in just a minute when we get to landing. I test out. As you can see, a lot of times when I ask them to go, my stick is right there ready to tap Ken because he also, under all, almost all circumstances, he's slower to start. So. Um, if you've got a horse that's kind of fast to start, and in other words, it's slow to start, it's a little bit discouraging on the horse that's fast if, if the slow horse doesn't start. So I like to be ready with the stick just to tap them to get them to go ahead. But as you can see, it takes very little to touch that tail to get him to go a little faster. I have to say that I sometimes feel sorry for Ken because Jim is always trying to make him go faster and it's just not his natural cadence. But I led him into the from the barn into the trailer this morning and I was like, come on Kenny, let's go. He's just kind of slow. You know, it is, I can understand it. I mean, Bill is just a naturally fast walker. It's just the way it is. And I'm hoping that Baron will be that way also. He seems to be, but we'll see. So we're coming up to the landing. Oh. So we'll get this kid started and get unloaded. But I do want to show you the setup I have in their bits right now. So, um, this is the rubber bit I have in Ken's mouth. And has that made a big difference? No, it really hasn't. He had just a regular snaffle bit in his mouth and there really doesn't seem to be any difference. But what, I wanted to try it. What is the difference? What are, what are you trying to do with it? Like Well, if, if, there's, if there's too much pressure on his mouth, he's going to want to slow down. So if I have the, the least amount of, res of, of pressure on his mouth and a rubber bit does that, 
he might walk faster. Is that the least that there is available? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So with, with Bill, because he's so aggressive, he actually has a wire bit in his mouth, um, which would normally be something to put on a horse that walks fast um, to try and slow him down. But there again, it really doesn't seem to help that much. The only thing that really seems to help him is hard work. Um, I have, I remember before, and I might even try it again, I've tried actually a rubber bit in his mouth, which seems like, well, of course that's not gonna work, but actually sometimes it does. Sometimes you have to have a horse that's, uh, you can actually put a rubber bit in their mouth and they'll actually go slower and easier. Um, but if I remember, it didn't make a huge difference before either way. I was just gonna say maybe, because if, if it bothers them, they just wanna get, get away from it or something. Right. Okay, let's get unloaded. Oh. Okay, so I ho ho. Oh, there. Oh. So I am going to go cut my uh, one last tree that's down there and get those logs out of there, and then we'll pull up out of here. And I've got one of my next big monsters to cut, and we'll cut that one down also. Um, I did want to tell everybody that we are planning on our next video. Uh, which would be Wednesday um, to share the winner of our weight contest with Lady. And so that will be on Wednesday. So I leave my horses right here because I don't want her, the horses to be hurt from the tree, of course. And I'll go cut that. So many people seem to have enjoyed our video a while back where we didn't have any talking. And uh, it was funny actually on that video because some people thought maybe Brenda and I were our, our, we're having a bad day so we weren't talking to each other but that wasn't the case at all of course um, we just wanted to, to go without any talking and uh, even the rest of this video we might do do that also and let you enjoy what we're doing without us rambling our mouths I did want to say one thing though. Um, here is a tree, a tiny little tree. Uh, I'm not even sure why the forester marked it, but uh, I was talking to him the other day and he was saying that this tree here is the same as that tree and the same as that tree. All these pine are here pretty well all the same age. So um, if you were to look at these growth rings, you'll see that they're tiny, really, 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 really close to each other because probably this tree just did not get as much light, wasn't as vigorous, wasn't as good of a tree. The bigger trees were better seed and they took off and shot higher into the sky to get that light and this one didn't.
I had said I wasn't going to talk, but there's so often in my videos, I go to make a video, I don't even know when I'm going to make the video about, and then it's just things come up, learning things that I'd like to share with you guys. So like I'd said, John had said, this is the same age as these are the trees. So this tree was, did not get the sunlight, did not grow as well as those big trees did, and as a result, look at this. This tree is no good. This whole big red circle is red rot. And it's absolutely no good. All there is is just a tiny little bit of good white wood around the outside that's of any value. And there's no way you can get a thing out of that whole tree. If I was cutting pulp, it could go for pulp, but I'm not cutting pulp in here because there's, there's not enough pulp. It's almost all logs. So I did cut a 16 footer there. Maybe that's the, the butt log will be okay. I don't know. I'll grab this with the excavator and just pull it out and we'll look at it and see if it is. Okay. But there again, this is just one of those things. Because it didn't do good, it got red rot, and it's no good. I have a question. I might not know the answer. I thought that red rot would start from the... Bot? Yeah. <sighs> red, red rot's a crazy thing. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I remember a job many, many years ago. I was cutting, and it was a plantation pine, and almost every tree in there, we cut it down at the butt, it looked fine, 14 feet up. It was red rot. From there, the rest of the tree was red rot. Strangest thing. So, who knows? All right, let me get going here. So, as you can see, we blocked and blocked and blocked, and all we're gonna end up with is a poor eight foot log with still a little bit of red rot in it. Okay, so that's all we have for logs down here. We'll move up to the a ways. We got a few up at the bottom of the hill. I'm not gonna chain anything on, hopefully. It'll be fine. I'll leave that one log on the escalator and bring that on because I don't want that on the slide until later on. Step step.
Ja, ja. Klappst du? Hey. Nice load, huh? Yeah. Uh, this top log is actually two tens. So I'll cut them off at the landing. So now I'll go down, get the excavator in that one last log, I'll bring it up top of the hill. And then I have these three good sized ones here to cut. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys have a great day. I cut this step. Have a good rest of the day.
Test that. Oh. 